to the heart, and that's our process. We'll talk about that more when we deal with cardiac as well. I'm not going to talk about gas um, fusions or anything like that and partial pressures. We're going to get into that later um, and really go over that in another aspect. Um, same with we're dealing with uh, gas transport. These are normally going to be oxygen is going to be on the uh, hemoglobin, but there is plasma and other components of the blood. When we talk about blood, we'll talk about that as well um, and how that area um, goes up. But for this lecture here, again, I'm moving through these a little bit quicker as I will do for the regular class as well because um, I just want you to get through with what we're looking for and just some basic aspect. Again, basic review. So um, our respiratory system is controlled by several different receptors that feed back the brain um, through that afferent pathways back to the brain and gives us uh, some sensory changes of basically how is our oxygen? Um, how is our carbon dioxide? Do we have too much carbon dioxide we need to blow off and go a little faster? Do we have too little? Um, do we need more oxygen in the system? Um, are we having issues? So all these type of things are going to deliver uh, information back to the brain uh, and then that's going to come back and tell us what we need to do. And different sensors are going to be monitoring our uh, percentage of oxygen, our percentage of, of CO2. Um, and those are all going to be how we control our respiration. Um, when we have damage to the respiratory centers of the brain, then um, we're out of that control. That's the part we need to go in and fix from that. But the medulla oblongata and the pons basically are our main... Um, respiratory control, you know, those sit on the brain stem again. So we talk about intracranial pressure and pushing down through that foramen magnum and it gets pressure across that. It throws off our whole disorder of breathing and we no longer are in good control of that. So we can get all different types of respirations from chain stokes, uh, uh, different type of orders and our, our rhythm is off. So that's all I really want you to know again from right there. Um, here's, again, our receptors we talked about into our pons and our medulla oblongata in the brain stem, and it comes down and it affects our interstitial, our accessory muscles, and our diaphragm, and, and uh, the rate and regularity of how we get that inhalation and exhalation. The herring bureau reflex basically is the inhalation and deflation reflexes. Um, what we're looking for for that is, again, we'll go over to another spot, but it basically just means when we hit a maximum area, it's going to force us to relax. Same as we get a maximal decrease, it's going to force us to get an inspiration. Um, different receptors I talked about are going to um, tell um, all those different aspects to see what we need to do, what we need to change, and how we need to affect. Our respiratory changes, so before birth, our pulmonary vessels are collapsed at the time because we're getting oxygenation through the... Um, umbilical cord, not through our lungs. Our rib cage is compressed because they've got to be able to pass through the birth canal. A lot of just changes. Once we get birth, that first breath that comes in, it's going to get that diaphragm uh, and the intercostal muscles uh, to open up, bring that air into there, and that's what's going to pop open that alveoli and that surfactant that's built in is going to help open that. So once they do open initially, the surfactant will fill that area and keep it open. Um, and that's why we want to get that good cry. Uh, and we'll get those good cries to open up. And really, they're going to be taking air in and not actually exhaling for a while because they got to fill up those lung capacities and get those areas up. Once that's built up, the surfactant basically keeps that alveoli from collapsing. That's why when you're dealing with an infant born before 30 weeks, um, they don't have that surfactant to keep open. So you may have to be intubating these patients or breathing uh, for them are giving them continuous positive pressure to help keep those lungs from staying open until they can get those surfactant in there to open up. As we get older, as with everything, it's going to change our ability to breathe. It's going to change our chest moment. It's going to limit our pulmonary capacities. Again, I say everything with a grain of salt because there's some people who can live in their 100 and they breathe great. There's some people who are in their 30s and they look terrible in our ability. So take it with a grain of salt. But as we get older, we're more <clears throat> susceptible to diseases. We're going to talk about um, those once we get into our respiratory section, first module. So that's where I'm going to leave off today. So hopefully uh, good, again, intro, very quick intro, but that's what we'll be doing. Um, please let me know of questions 
submit to there, and uh, I'll also do a final review uh, at the very end once you've gone through all these lectures that'll prepare you for the test and what we're looking for. Thank you very much.